The car we are reviewing today is a Korean car that is named after an American city. It is a car that most of you have really asked for on the comment section and at Conversations we deliver because we are that channel that is going to guarantee you an alluring motor vehicle experience. I'll be your host Eric Okabi, Eric with the CK. Do follow me at a personal level on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Also, we value your feedback like uh, during the time you guys really asked that we bring the Santa Fe, especially after the CRV and we have delivered so keep on sharing your sentiments on our social media platforms conversations on facebook twitter and instagram and now uh, let's get up close and candid with the santa fe And remember, before we talk about the Santa Fe, tonight we have conversations redriven on Conversations Row. And it's an interesting one. So Mbugua, kindly give them a trailer. Legacy 2.5 Subaru Legacy B4. Kuja. And this is a 30 year old car. And your manual shifting. Yes. Subscribe. Subscribe to Conversations Row. Subscribe. So remember to subscribe to Conversations Row. It's our other channel whereby we bring you all the fun things that used to be on this channel like uh, restorations and also redriven. And now let's get up close and candid with the Santa Fe. Now, the Hyundai Santa Fe is a Korean crossover SUV that uh, is named after uh, a city in the United States of America. It, this car is a favorite to many in the US and Hyundai as a whole. And um, there are not so many in uh, you know Asian countries, but uh, in, in South Africa, they are becoming popular. Then they are also very popular in Rwanda and Burundi. Uh, this particular one is the third generation of the Santa Fe. Now Santa Fe is a city in New Mexico. That is what inspired the name of this compact cr crossover SUV. And uh, in terms of looks, the Santa Fe looks, uh, you know, subtle yet very trendy. It looks the part. It might not be as aggressive looking or as stylish as the Mazda CX-5, but it is better looking compared to the Honda CR-V. It's one of those unique cars, cars that will not, you know, shout their presence like the Mazdas, but they'll still look good yet very simple. And as we say, simplicity is uh, the ultimate sophistication. So what powers up this particular Hyundai Santa Fe that we got from our good friends, Caplicity. By the way, they have a whole stock list of cars that they are giving out at uh, discounted prices. So you can check out their Instagram pages, Caplicity, and also on Facebook. Uh, you can also go there, talk to David. I'm a Kevin. I'm a Kevin. I'm a Now let's check out what powers up the Hyundai Santa Fe. If you're buying a third generation Hyundai Santa Fe, which was, uh, the third generation is from 2012 to around 2018, uh, there, are, uh, there is a variety, a whole variety of engine options. You can either buy petrol or diesel. Uh, the petrol ones you get uh, optional, two two liter options, one multi-point, another one uh, GDI, meaning gasoline direct injection. You also get uh, a 3.3, a 2.4 liter. So they're about 
for petrol options. But this particular one that we have today is a diesel one. When you're buying the diesel Santa Fe, you get a choice of two diesel engines, a two liter and a 2.2 liter. Now these diesel engines, uh, whenever you see a Hyundai Santa Fe or a Kia Sorento, you will see, and it's diesel, you will see the, the badge CRDI. And it's the same badge on the engine cover. So what does CRDI mean? It means common rail direct injection, meaning fuel is delivered directly to the cylinders uh, through high pressure nozzles um, and also a common rail and is turbocharged. So this is a turbo diesel and the most impressive thing about this engine, actually this 2.2 liter from Hyundai has two unique selling points. Number one is fuel economy because this can push up to 16 kilometers to the liter of diesel. And uh, the other thing is the power figures. This engine can churn out around 197 horsepower and a whooping 440 newton meters of torque. It is a car when you drive, you will feel the diesel punch in it and the raw, you know, the, the, the raw torque. And the, the other good thing is that in diesel engines, you get uh, torque at lower RPMs. You do not have to rev. In fact, diesel engines are not high revving. How is the power transmitted to the wheels? On the Santa Fe, you can either get one that is two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. But in any of those, you're going to get a six-speed automatic transmission. So this one, this specific one, power is transmitted to the wheels through a six-speed automatic transmission. And this one is a four-wheel drive. So with the four-wheel drive, it's more of a permanent four-wheel four drive system, but with front-wheel bias. Sasa. So that is something that you need to know. Also, if you want to make maximum use of uh, the four-wheel drive, you can uh, put the car to four-wheel drive lock so that you can have 50-50 power being sent to the front and the rear wheels. Let's talk about the side profile. And as we talk about the side profile, there is one thing that you might note about the Santa Fe. Now, apart from the looks, uh, the shape does closely resemble that of a Kia Sorento. We had a review of the Kia Sorento and it was an amazing car back then. So the Kia Sorento and this Hyundai Santa Fe are more or less the same thing. In fact, they are the same car packaged differently. They are built on uh, the Kia Hyundai Y6 platform. So this means when you buy a Hyundai Santa Fe or a Kia Sorento, uh, most parts are compatible. And that is a good thing because you want a car whereby you do not have to struggle a lot for parts. And we'll talk about parts of this car or how easy it is, it is to get them in Kenya in our value for money segment. Kama uh, Kwaida in compact crossover SUVs, what do you get? You get these plastic guards that prevent shrubs from scratching your nice paint job when you're going off-roading. Also, it's a medium wheelbase. It's not a very long car, but it is a bit bigger compared to a Mazda CX-5 and slightly longer compared to a Subaru Forester. It has decent legroom. And one thing that is unique about the Santa Fe that is not in most Japanese SUVs like the CX-5, uh, the Subaru Forester, is that it, is, it has a seven-seater configuration, just like the Kia Sorento. So if you're, if you're having a family, if you're a family person, you get two extra seats on the Santa Fe. But remember, this is not standard because not all Santa Fe's come in as seven-seaters, just like the Toyota RAV4s, Vanguards, you get seven-seater as optional. Also on this one, this is an entry-level spec. So higher trim levels will, will come with sunroofs, especially if you import them from Singapore and other fancy things when it comes to the interior. Even the rims but you get alloys as standard on the Santa Fe but you can get better better looking rims especially if you import from Singapore yeah so you have a variety of trim levels on the Santa Fe this being the basic and it can get better but one one thing is for sure that this car does stand out but the question is is it value for money before we talk about value for money let's look at what is in the interior the entry level Santa Fe has a very, very, very basic interior, nothing much. Uh, it is an Asian car, but has the orientation of a European car, meaning the turn signal is on your, the turn signal knob is on your left and the wiper knob is on your right hand side. Also, the, the panel that uh, has all the four wheel drive accessories, the downhill descent assist, um, the, the four wheel drive lock, the eco mode, traction control, all of them are 
uh, they are compiled in a cluster that is on the right hand side and it makes it very convenient for the driver to you know to operate the other thing is that just like normal modern crossover suvs it comes with an electronic handbrake outer hold uh, this particular one has full leather seats and uh, they are heated for, for those of you who live in limuru or dumberi this might come in very very handy so how practical is the hyundai santa fe now the santa fe is quite practical but uh, if you remember the review we did of the sorento the sorento had an electronic tailgate but this one still has an electronic tailgate. some trim levels still will feature an electronic tailgate it's only that this one is a basic one so if you prefer the one with an electronic tailgate they are available also you can see the third row of seats that might not be very comfortable for an adult or uh, even kids for lo over long distances so sometimes i perceive uh, the third row of seats in these compact crossover suvs to be quite useless by the way because they are not very comfortable they are only handy over long distances so you can fold this and get all that cargo space eh? so it has decent cargo space for your family and uh, you know you can still fold even the second row of seats in case you have bulky stuff to carry around um, see the budging you have the Hyundai badge right here and you have the Santa Fe badge. So Santa Fe, you know, uh, American city, in New Mexico, then CRDI, Common Rail Direct Injection. I told you what that means and four wheel drive, meaning this particular one is a four wheel drive. Again, I'll keep on telling guys again and again and again, it's, it's not very economical or practical. It does not make much sense having a crossover SUV that is two wheel drive. Now. Uh, with that, let's take this car for a drive with the boys and uh, we'll come back and do value for money because that's a very interesting segment. Uh, Wase, yes. today we are happy to have a Korean car. Yes, uh, different the, feel. Different feel, the Hyundai. Yes. Santa Fe. Is it the Hyundai Hyundai? No, it's or Hyundai. Hyundai. Actually, or there, are, Hyundai. Hyundai. There, there are people who call them Hyundai. Hyundai. Yeah. There is the real co Koreans call them Hyundai. Ah, Americans going, call them Hyundai. Yeah. Hyundai. Like that. No, we are going to call it like the Korean. Uh, Hyundai. Hyundai. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice, Wakabe. Very nice. A different test of a car. I think it's a long time before. I think we sat in another Korean car in. Was it in 2020 yeah, or was it 20, the, the Kia Sorento? It was actually 2021. Yes. 2022. Yes. 2021. It was 2021. Wow. The Kia Sorento. Mm. Uh, built on. The, okay. Between this and the Sorento, they are more or less the same thing. Yes. Uh, they are both built on uh, Kia Hyundai Y6 platform. Yes. So suspension, Karibu Kila Kit, even the engine options, they are the same. I love these Koreans have a funny way of naming engines. Yes. There is uh, Theta, there is Lambda. You remember those ah, Greek yeah, letters? Telling us in the Kia. In the, the Kia, yeah. Yes. Uh, that is how they name their engines. Mm. But this particular one is diesel. Mm -hmm. And uh, one 2 thing. 2.2. 2.2 liter when you're buying a, a hyundai or a kia you will get it in uh, either a 2 liter or 2.2 that's yes. when you're buying the diesel yes. for the petrol you have an optional 2 liter direct injection 2 liter multi-point yes. 2.4 multi-point 2.4 multi-point so mm -hmm. they're, they're like four four petrol options oh. yeah just like we, we did with the sorento yes yeah but this one if you compare it to the sorento mm -hmm. uh, the infotainment system is better on this one. It is a bit bigger. Yes. The, the yes. Sorento had a very small, small screen. Yes. Yeah. But I don't like the plastics. I know you not like it. But it has too much plastics. Have you noticed? Oh, yeah. I, 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 like, I have no problem with it. Yeah, you you have never had any problem with the plastic. plastic. No, it's... Uh, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's... Let me ask you a simple question. Yes. Why? Why would you have a problem with the plastic? Plastic that I'm feeling, um, I hoped, you see, normally my problem with plastic on kind of semi-luxury cars is when it, it has been used too much. Because I feel for the money I'm paying, I need to get something a bit more, you understand? But for a basic car, 
I wouldn't mind, but this one I feel there is. But one thing I can give to them is mm -hmm. the kind of plastic used here is different, Okapi. Yeah. If you look at it, it's I don't know what how to call it, but it looks like it's a unique quality. Yeah, but plastic, plastic is plastic. No, yeah. but it, this one looks a bit nicer. It's plastic, yes, but it looks... in terms of looks, I would have to dispute. Yes, <laughs> the plastic looks. It does not look any no, different. No, but this plastic is looking good. This is just a, 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 a what is it called? It's just ni 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 your pattern too. Mm. But ah. plastic and plastic. Plastic and plastic. You either call a spade a spade. To end the copy. But I like the design here. You've seen how things look here. Yeah, it, it's it's a very spacious uh, vehicle. Mm. Um. It doesn't feel as different as it would. By the way, you know, it's an Asian car. Yes. Only that now this one is a UK spec. Ah, this is a UK so spec. That's where you, you can see the indicator. The indicator. Right. But even on the Sorento, the indicator yes, is still on this side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Koreans are known for cars such as the Sangyong, mm. the Kia, the Hyundai. Which other one? Me, mm. I only know. Dominantly, I know the Sangyong. Yes, Sangyong. And Sangyong is a big. It's a big name. Yes. Sangyong is a big name. I think name. there was a time Sangyong was quite dominant in the Kenyan market. Especially Muso. Yes. If you didn't have Doret. a Muso yeah. back then, yeah. you are not rich. Because what will do it? Yeah, ah. Sangyong Muso. I remember at our village, we used to have one Muso. Yes. Uh, a certain old man. He's still alive. Yes. But I don't know where the Muso went. But what I can tell you, you would know it's coming by looking at the clouds of smoke. It used to smoke like nobody's <laughs> business. Hey, Bukwa, how do you feel back there? Here on the rear, to be honest, okay, I feel it's basic to me. Yeah, it's, it's basic. Uh, the only thing, it's the leg. But it's not that, it's a normal. I don't know what to say about this car. I don't. I have. Uh, but don't forget, this is the basic spec. Yeah, this that's is the I'm entry saying, level. Is, I don't know how, because I've not been in a. Have you seen Hyundai? I'm a Hyundai. <laughs> Hyundai. Hyundai before, so I have no idea Ooh, how. You haven't uh, been in a Hyundai before. There's a time Hyundai is a big name in Kenya. Yes. The Hyundai Accent. Mm -hmm. the, you know those ones that were used by the government, Sana yes, Sana? Yes. They were slick looking cars back then. Wow, just great cars. Okay, I think this car is special. I don't know, we need to give it. Yeah. Comparing to the CRV that we did previous week, I think they go draw in terms yeah, of space. But ah, I feel the CRV, CRV is more spacious. Big. The CRV is bigger. Yeah, yeah, even the real. I love you know uh, what makes the CRV even bigger yes. is that you see this one is a floor mounted uh, shifter. Yes. That one had a ah. had a collar mounted. Ah. So you have a lot of oh, space. Yeah. And also on the rear you didn't have yeah. this. The hump. The hump here. It yes. Large. The legroom was great. And also this one has a seven seater. Yeah. It ah, this a, one has seven, a, a seven, a seven Actually, seat. I think the CRV is the only uh, crossover without a seven, a seven seat, seater option. It's a, I, I, I would say it, 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 the CRV wins in terms of space. Yes, that is true. The CRV wins. But I feel mm. the, the, the seven seater, this is the space that I get here here on the on the second row of seats. I don't want to be on that rear seat. I don't, I don't want even to imagine how uncomfortable it is. Or oh, the last row of the seats. Last row of seats yeah. no, the, the last row of seats, whether it's in the Vanguard, whether it's in the Outlander, Prado, Mitsubishi, Pajero, it is it is not very good. Yeah. Yeah. But I think you've said it over time, it's not a space where you want to put an adult. Exactly. It will exactly. do well for kids. Yeah. Uh, but you have already said that we always here come to talk about the new. So I mean, that's do we, what do, who do you want us to be carrying on those you seats? Remember, you remember the Mazda, the Mazda CX-8? Yeah, the CX-8 CX is practical. CX-9. CX-8, yeah, it was a CX-8, yes. Yeah. The it, was a bit, it was a bit comfortable. It was accommodative. Yeah, it was accommodative for an adult. Yes. So, mm. let's get to the most interesting part about this car. Yes. The power figures. Yes. Because the power figures on this car are very, very impressive. Actually, yes. it, it, uh, the, okay, it's a diesel engine. Yes. So you expect a lot of torque from it. Mm -hmm. uh, 2.2 liter, yes. common rail direct injection. That is why it's called CRDI. Mm -hmm. uh, the horsepower rating is around 197. Wow. That is only three horsepower less, less of 200, 200 horsepower. Uh -huh. The torque figures is where the magic is. 440 newton meters of torque Ooh. at 2,000 RPM. Hey. hey, I think this is going to be a good zero to 100. It's 
going to be a good but uh, remember one thing about diesels yes. the flat spot theory mm -hmm. you don't diesels generally do not diesel engines do not rev high yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's so, why you say the torque is at 2000 2000 2500 rpm you'll mm -hmm. be getting max torque yes so can we do the 0 to 100 definitely okay we get need ready to, we need to do 0 to 100 also we have a six speed automatic on this one nice. so, so there's no, there's no way. Uh, okay, something else I want to ask you, Kabi. Does the diesel still affect this? I'm a diesel. No, kuna vitu lazima ufanye when you are buying this car in Kenya. DPF delete is number one. Because this is another Euro 6 rated car. Okay. Uh, so, mafuta yetu najua baru tuko Euro 4. So, the, the diesel problem, you we cannot still, avoid it. Yes. Cannot avoid the diesel problem, so. But it's a good vehicle to compete against the CX-5. Yes. So the CX-5 does win in terms of looks. Mm -hmm. The diesel. Also I feel the pricing. The pricing of this one is 3.5 million. <laughs> that is like a million more <laughs> than the, 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 the CX-5. Are you ready? Yes, my brother. I was born ready. Here you go. Yes. Oh. Ah. Oh, shit. Good, good. What the hell was that? <laughs> I think it's, it's the box. <laughs> ah, that's the talk. A hundred. We are there. Twelve seconds. seconds. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> the talk figures in this vehicle are wow. insane. Wow. Insane. Wow. Who does give any guy in Amka? I rent. This is this is this is a unique. A unique kind of acceleration from a diesel engine or car. Then you see this one is all wheel drive. Ah, so you have better oh. traction. Wow. 12 seconds or car. 12 seconds. That is very decent for a diesel engine. Yeah, my friend. Meaning it goes above the CX-5. Yeah. Yes. It goes above the CX-5. Definitely. Hyundai people. Hyundai. 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 James Combo, James Combo. Are you dying? Yeah, Bugwa, Bugwa. Uh, for me, I'll give this car a uh, eight point five. Uh -huh. The reason why I'm giving eight point five, I'm not really familiar with this car. I will be honest in this review, I'm not really familiar with this Hyundai, Hyundai, whatever <laughs> thing. You know, you are speaking with perspective of you knew this car from the past. Me, I was not there. Me, I didn't. Me, me, I didn't. We bought a Toyota Vilja di Oksema and the Mazdas. Yes. But for me, I'll give it an 8.5. It's, it's a nice car. It's a good family car. The seven-seater configuration. Uh, about the looks, I won't really. <laughs> Toyota and Mazda. Uh, uh, looks, looks Mazda. Win. Mazda wins. Mazda design wins. Language. But the price point. The, the reason why it's losing is also the price point. Because I feel 3.5 mic, but now it's an arm and a leg. Yeah, it's a lot. 3.5 is Toyota Harrier territory. Territory. Uh, but for the power that it offers. But for the power, I, I might but, consider. That. But you see, if you're if you're talking about power, yes. 3.5 can get you a more powerful vehicle. Okay. Well, you won't. Okay. It would. Can you give me? Uh, For me, Okabi, I'm going to give this car a 7.5. 7.5. Why 7.5? Why the 7.5? One, I know that uh, between the year 2014 and 2017, Kia and Hyundai have had issues with their <laughs> with the engines. Yes, reliability. In fact, it was reported in other markets. Zili kwa zinazima tu zinanyamaza. You understand? So I do not want to try my luck with that one. But, but it gets a seven. Another reason why it loses the. It loses down to the 7.5 is i've told you the story of where there was a car from korea that yeah. we wanted spare parts and we had to wait for the korean guy who had gone for a holiday to come back so i think in terms of availability of spare parts okay probably i don't know but i, I think there's some serious components from this car that if you need them available go market haziko you'll have either to ship in or uh, you have to uh, okay shipping in is the, the only option but I love the power, I love the acceleration, I love the comfort, I love the features, heated seats, ninini. It's it's a balanced car to me. So for me, I think if you are not uh, in a problem with those things I've mentioned, I think it's it's a fantastic car. Uh, for me, number one, yes, 
Uh, I'll give this car uh, an 8 mm -hmm. because one, it's very powerful, very economical on fuel, can push up to around 15 kilometers to the liter, 15 16 kilometers to the liter on a diesel engine. Impressive, yes. impressive car to handle. Uh, the other thing, while it, why it will score highly is because of you know, uh, it, it feels different, yes. It does feel different. It's it's a unique vehicle, but now that comes with a challenge. Number one, parts, also reliability, especially the diesel ones. If you buy this one off the showroom, you have to do a DPF delete. You have to do one, two, three things, right? Yes. So eight, eight, and eight for me will have it for this car, but it loses majorly on the pricing. Ah, the pricing. Yes, that is correct. Fantastic. So that is Mbugua eight point five. Uh, will car be 8, that is 16.5 plus a 7.5 so that is 16, 23.5 23, no it's just 23 you've given it a what? Uh, 7.5 oh 7.5, we'll give it a 7 23 so 23 23 not bad out of 30 not bad looks fantastic yeah? Mm. 25 value for money let's do value for money Let's talk about value for money. Uh, the Santa Fe is retailing for around 3.5 million Kenya shillings. And that sets it all, you know, ahead of the pack, ahead of the Subaru Forester, ahead of the Mazda CX-5, ahead of the Honda CRV, ahead of the Toyota RAV4. So is there anything that makes the Santa Fe more expensive i think it's only the fact that it looks different i i don't see anything that would make the price disparity be so high so it might be a bit uneconomical in terms of price let's talk about reliability these vehicles hyundai's that were made between 2014 or the way to around 2018 uh, worldwide had they had they, they, there was a notorious you know, problem that uh, put Hyundai into so many problems, these cars would just drive, stop and shut down completely. There have been Hyundai recalls and uh, since we, are, we buy foreign used cars in Kenya, those might affect us big time. So you might never know if, if the car you bought went for the recall. In fact, it's hard for you to tell. So that gives that uh, fear of the unknown when it comes to buying a Hyundai. So what are the pros? The pros are, if you buy this diesel one, uh, you're going to get very good fuel economy, you're going to get a lot of power and a lot of torque. Also, uh, the driving thrill is, uh, the driving thrill and the handling is very good on this vehicle. But the downside is, when you buy a diesel vehicle in Kenya today, especially these modern Euro 6 rated diesels, you have to do a DPF delete and some modifications to the softwares and to the engine hardwares because um, some, some modifications to the software and uh, engine hardware as well because our fuel currently is below Euro 4 and that means we have very high uh, sulfur content in our fuel and this does not really go well with diesel engines. These are some of the problems, these are some of the reasons why we have been having problems with diesel Mazda CX-5s, diesel Mazda Demios and most diesel Euro 6 passenger cars. So that is something that you have to be on the lookout before you buy a Hyundai Santa Fe CRDI, the diesel one. Sawa sawa. What about the petrol ones? The petrol ones have been known to have issues as well, especially when they clock high mileages. So is it a good idea to buy a Santa Fe? Well, if you really want to stand out, it will give you that element of standing out. But in the long run, it is way more expensive and might not be value for money when it comes to buying a compact crossover SUV. I hope this review has been insightful. I've been your host, Eriko Kabi, Eriko with a CK. Do follow me at a personal level on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and also TikTok. And tell us which other cars do you want to see? Uh, cars that are not Japanese or German. Uh, today we brought you a Korean one. So suggest which other cars do you want to see on Conversations? Tell us and share your sentiments on our socials, Conversations on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram.